Now we got our gun pulled out. I'm ready to go start the pump up here. Um, as I was pulling it out, I noticed a lot of our silks had been clipped off by these little buggers, Japanese beetles. And it's interesting that I'm finding them on that one. I assumed they were done and gone because they wanted the green fresh silks instead of the brown silks. Um, but maybe not. Let me find a spot because there was... It was streaky where you'd get one spot and where all of the, or a lot of the silks in a row were clipped off. Like that one's been done. And then you'd go for a while and not see much. There's one. I wanted to pull one of those ears because what we worry about with um, the insects, see here we've got you know, the second ear and this one and this one all got it. What we worry about with silk clipping is that if those silks get cut off, um, they can't receive pollen and it can't fill out that ear. But all of these ears look like they've pollinated it and are filling out quite well. So it actually appears that it's late silk clippers doing the damage here, which really surprises me. I see we got a bunch right here. And there and that one. But I don't know that that's really hurting anything. All right, so here's one of those spots where it's basically every ear in a row. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. I mean, they just got them all, right? But those ears are nice and fat. So let's pull this ear and uh, see what the pollination on it looks like. So there's our ear. You can see the flat top to all of the silks that... They just got clipped off, but I mean, they're not falling off of there because they're embedded in the kernels at this point. The kernels have all pollinated quite clearly. Right out to the tip. Now what those clip, silk clippers are maybe doing is opening up the end of the ear for some disease or other insects to get in there and start eating the kernels. But even these white ones on the tip are pollinated and going to fill out, so... That may not look like a super impressive ear, but you have to remember that we have this planted super thick. And so the more of these that we have, the better our yield's going to be. Um, that looks, looks real good to me. At the risk of contradicting myself here a little bit, um, I don't like seeing those silk clippers. And um, it's not a good thing, but it's not a terrible thing. Um, what I'm getting at here is that when they've sprayed this with the airplane for the fungicide, they put an insecticide in with it. That was not my choice. I did not put insecticide in on any of the stuff that we sprayed with the Haggy because I don't see the need for it. Um, the biggest concern with insects when you're spraying tassel corn is silk clippers like that and them preventing pollination. Clearly we didn't have that issue. They came in later. But they sprayed this field with insecticide. Where did they come from? Why are we getting so much feeding um, if it was sprayed, I, I think that was a waste of money and it wasn't really my choice to do it. So I'm not thrilled, um, with the fact that I had to put insecticide on here that didn't do me any good. Our rain gauge is still there. Hopefully we come up this afternoon and see how much is in it. Okay, that's up and running. Should be done around 3 o'clock this afternoon. So we'll be back up here then. We gotta head back to the farm. We have a lot to do, and I don't know what we're gonna actually get done today, but um, we got some spraying to do. I'm questioning whether spraying right now is effective or not, if there's rain coming. Uh, but we might do some of that this morning. The rain's a ways out yet, so I think we'll be all right. And uh, rock will be around a little bit. We've got a few other things to work on, so see you back there. All right, we had a uh, chemical shuttle that was uh, just about empty, so I emptied that out into jugs. Uh, it's Enlist One uh, herbicide that um, we've got a field with some mare's tail in it. Well, one of them that we sprayed last week that I don't want to do it, but I think we need to spray it and kill the mare's tail. So cleaning that shuttle out, I was rinsing it with water just going into our mix cone there, uh, and then I filled some jugs that are over there. So uh, seeing how much exactly we had so we know how many acres we can spray with it. Brock's trying to figure out where our squeak's coming from. It's not a wheel bearing. It might be a U-joint somewhere, but there is a grease fitting on the drive shaft that goes to the front axle uh, on there that 
could be coming from there. There's lots of possibilities, I guess. It's hard to narrow it down. It doesn't squeak when it's in the shop here, so hmm, maybe we'll get it. Maybe we won't. I don't know. All right. Um, I got that shuttle cleaned out. It is a little bit too windy to spray today, especially a herbicides. And uh, with our fungicides, we, we've got such small droplets and, and mist that I don't like spraying that in the wind either because it will blow and drift and that's not what we want. So we're going to hold off on spraying today. Hope that it rains enough tonight that we can't spray tomorrow because it'll be too wet, but I doubt that'll be the case. Um, but we'll see. So that is something we've got to get done this week, but I'm not going to do it when it's not the right weather conditions. All right, so Brock is finishing up that job. Um, other thing I want to do today is get the 9R out and change the draw bar on it. Um, we've got a set of scrapers. They're sitting right over there. And we need to get them hooked up so we can do them, some dirt work with them and use them this summer. And in order to hook them up to our tractor, we have to change the draw bar. It takes a different stop. So, we gotta get, we got to get that tractor out. We gotta get this one out of the way. That one's awesome. All right, this one's been sleeping since spring. Let's wake it up. Make sure it's got oil. It does. Bets on whether or not it will start. It should. Oh yeah. Excellent. A little air in our seat. There we go. Alright, we're going to just do this right behind the shop on our little concrete pad there. Pretty simple to do, I'll show you. Okay, so this is our ag draw bar. This is what we use to pull all of the the ripper, the disc, the field cultivator. I guess that, that's what we pull with this tractor. Anyway, that's gotta come out of there. We gotta pull these two bolts out of here. And we've got our scraper draw bar over here that we need to put on. Um, you can see it's a totally different attachment system with some like, uh, yeah, I don't even know what you call them. Dog ears, they're whatever, anyway. We gotta put that on. So the draw bar attaches up underneath the front axle here. With this big pin right here. That one doesn't, oh no, not that big pin, this big pin. See, there's no pin there, but it's this one. So we gotta reach up in there and there's a spring retention deal. We gotta pick up on and spin it. This pin should push up out of there. Just had to knock the dirt out of it. Now it's loose. Okay. Now that draw bar will slide right out the back. So we stick our forklift forks under there and put a small chain on to hold it. Back it up, Brock. And it should slide out, nice and slow. Uh, stop, stop, stop. I think we gotta take these bolts out first, maybe. Uh, it's just caught on one. Okay, never mind, go. Slow. Lift your forks up, back up. Back up. Stop. Lift up. Lift up. Lift or tilt. Up. Back up. Tip it back. Back out. He's got it. Don't let it fall. What? Don't let it fall. It's heavy. It's very heavy. All right, we gotta get some blocks to set that thing on. 
Okay, we got that one setting over there. Now we gotta pick this one out. See if you can get that end shoved into the... Oh, we gotta get them bolts out still. All right, I'm gonna get our wrench. Well, while I was getting tools, Brock managed to drop the draw bar, so I think he's getting it picked up. What happened? <laughs> All right, these two bolts have to come out because this one going in is wider than the one that we took out, so they have to, they have to move out to these holes. All right. See if you can get this lined up and shoved into there. Down. There you go. Nice. Have to go down some more. There. Stop. Try and grab it right under these. Really, you can push it in there by hand once you get it to this point. It's pretty easy. Slide it in until you get right to the end, and then it wants to tip down, and you gotta help get it lined up. come in about four inches okay keep going keep going uh, hold on wiggle it for me This bolt, she's going to need replaced sooner rather than later. There's a bit of a lip on there. All right, so we can wait. Whoa, 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 stop. We're taking the wrong bolts apart. I don't want the outside bolt. Take two off at a time. All right, um, we got that in. And now, as you can tell, we are going to remove some wheel weights. I should have done this before spring. It didn't happen. Um, but when you have the scrapers on, they put so much weight on the rear axle via the draw bar, which is why we have to change the draw bar, that uh, we want to take as much weight as possible off of the tractor. So we don't have any of our suitcase weights in the center, and we're going to take two wheel weights off of each side. That's 1,800 pounds. That, that's significant. These wheel weights are super easy to take off, which is why I should have done it before spring, but we never got to. Are you free? Just three bolts that hold them on. Good. And with the forklift, we should be able to, yeah, back them right out. Just like that. Moving the tractor so we can get to this side. It's starting to rain. It's starting to rain. That's a good thing. Well, I was going to get those pans hooked up. Now it's kind of raining, although it doesn't really show up on the radar, so we'll have to wait a few minutes and see. I'm going to back this cart back in the barn here and get that closed up. All right, well, it didn't rain much, so we're going to attempt to hook onto these two things over here. Um, we had taken a couple of cylinders off, one on each pan, last fall, spring, early. I don't remember when exactly, but 
point being, we got a couple of cylinders that need to get put back on, which means there are hydraulic hoses that are bare, just capped off here. Uh, I'm hoping we can get it hooked up without having to do that. We can drag it over to the shop to install them. That would make this easier. Well, we got it. But, uh, yeah, we got we to gotta get our cylinders on and hoses hooked up right. And these are all wrong. The only one I'm confident in is the one that says 4L and 4R. The rest of them aren't labeled, so we got to figure that out. But we got them. I was able to operate the cylinders that I needed to lift them up and the tongues off uh, without spraying too much oil everywhere. So we've got to get the cylinders put back in. The ones that we took off are the ones that control the gates for dumping purposes. So we're going to drag them up in front of the shop and uh, get to work. All right, well, I'm going to go eat lunch. We'll come back and we'll work on that this afternoon. The sun's coming out. It's not good. It's supposed to be raining. All right, I'm back from lunch. Um, I'm going to do a little power washing here and get some of this dirt and grease and stuff off so it's a little easier to work on, get it back together. Okay, well, there's a little less grease and oil and dirt and stuff. There's still some down in there. Oh well, better. So we can figure out how to put the cylinder in. We got the forklift in here to try and lift up on that front um, gate a little bit, but I'm not exactly sure how this goes back together. Dad took it apart, so he's gonna come help us, I think. Well, I got the cylinder in there and I got the bottom pin in. Now we just gotta get the top lined up in there, I believe. So I've got this suspended from the forklift and I think we're gonna either need to use the forklift to move it up and down and get it lined up, or I hook the hoses up and try and use the cylinder, the hydraulics on the tractor to move it. I feel much more confident using the forklift, honestly. All right, we've run into a snag. So this um, pin here is what holds the top of the cylinder, right? And then there's a what used to be a bolt that has broken off um, that we are trying to get out. I tried to spin it out with vice grips did not work so we heated it and tried with vice grips we heated it some more tried with a pipe wrench it's not budging so now it becomes cut and drill we're gonna try and cut and drill we could torch it out but it risks ruining the hole and we would like to salvage the hole for a new bolt if possible so that's where we're at update the drill worked. We were able to drill it out pretty good and then tried an extractor. Two different extractors tried heating it between and no good. So now it's turning into liquid. All right. Dad's going to get that hole cleaned up for us and then everything's going to be hot so we all let it cool down. Uh, I got to go move the traveler anyway. So Brock and I are going to go do that. Take fuel up for the generator. Won't take long. All right, we're gonna let Brock pull the gun. He's done it once before, I think, and he rode with me once or twice. I told him this is a short pull, so I'm gonna go start to pump up. I told him, I said, you got five minutes. I'm gonna start to pump up. We'll have water blasting him. <laughs> no, he'll be fine, but don't speed, because three miles an hour, max speed. This is the first time you guys have ever seen it from this angle when the gun's being pulled out. It sure sounds like things are just going crazy. So you can see, pulling that out at three miles an hour, it makes this thing spin like crazy. So our magnet here is still sensing every one of those as they go by. You can see the red light beat blinking. And that's how it's counting how far out it's been pulled so that it knows you know, how many times it needs to count it coming back in, essentially. And you'll watch here, we're pulling layers off the outside. You can see this arm resting against that hose. And then we'll watch as it gets down to the last uh, wrap on this layer, how that changes as it goes in. Okay, we're getting down towards the end of this first layer. This is the last wrap, so as that one goes down, you see that pipe right in, right there. And now the, he's still driving the same speed, but the reel's actually spinning faster. And he's about all the way out. We're not going to pull this one all the way. He won't even get past this layer. So, all right, I got to go start the pump. Did you make it? 
We made it. We didn't hit no pipe. We uh. Did you get blasted with water? Nope. Oh, that's good. It, it came out. I stopped a little too quick. You you stopped a little stopped too quick. Little... You did stop a little quick. Cause see what happens is the hose on winds yeah. when you stop too quick. But it's all right. It'll wind back up as long as we're still tight and we don't get it. Oh, out of the way. Yeah, don't hit that bar. Uh, 538 feet. Well, we just got back here and the head's done. Apparently he has no patience or need for help, so he can do it himself. That's all right, that's good. It's done back together. Yeah. Went to the bar while I fixed it. Eh? We did, went to the bar while you were working here. I tapped that hole up. Did it work? Yeah. Did you tighten the hydraulic fittings? Oh uh, yeah, they could probably be checked. Okay, because I didn't tighten them, I just handed them. But. Did you guys run it before? Run. The hydraulics? I had to run them to lift the pans up to get them up here. No, the, the lift cylinder. The cylinder. No. On that one. No. Okay, just gotta get that lined up and get it in just the right spot. Okay, cylinders are back in, hooked up, everything should work. We need to fix our hydraulics because they're not hooked up right, and we need to grease and we need to check all of the tires. I know we have some flat ones, I saw them, so let's let's do that. Okay, she's greased, tires all got air in them. I think this is ready to go. We're gonna try it out. We're gonna run through all the hydraulics, make sure everything opens and closes all the way like it's supposed to, and then uh, we, may, we may make a trip or two, load her up. So there's two hydraulics for each pan. Uh, let's, I'm gonna pull around back. We're not gonna do this in the driveway right here. All right, so first one raises and lowers. And then outlet two raises the gate and dumps. Okay, three should raise and lower the back pan, which it does, and four should dump it, which it does. What a deal. Should we try and load them up? We gotta haul some dirt. We need to haul some dirt. Well, that was rather unsuccessful spin around here I'll show you what the deal is what we're trying to do we've got a little stockpile of some topsoil in that general area there there's a big mound there so I'm trying to scoop it up and take it to my yard it's my fill dirt or topsoil fill dirt yeah I got I've never really run these pans so I'm learning we're gonna try and get them full this time too hard to film and learn but I got a pan and a quarter now, we need to get this to my house. I was gonna drive it right down the road. I think I'll be okay. Problem is, the guy that takes care of the road, he's working on the berm on the side, right across the road from my house. So, I'm gonna have to wait for him to leave. Well, that actually worked pretty well, I think. We got, we got some dirt in there. Ah, yeah, that'll work. All right. Cool. Now we just keep making the round trip. Now that we've run a cycle, we better get out and make sure we don't have any major oil leaks anywhere or anything. Our connections that we all made are good. Everything looks fine. Okay, good deal. I thought I saw an oil leak on one of these. Not that one. Maybe. It's not bad. We don't worry about oil leaks on this unless they're bad oil leaks. So... We'll move a little dirt with it. Dad's gonna use it a bunch this summer in our wheat stubble, and so um, I'm gonna I'm gonna use it to move some dirt to grade my lawn off. That's kind of what I've been waiting for, just to get that hooked up. Um, so that project, and then Dad's got lots of dirt to move in various fields to improve surface drainage and waterways and that kind of stuff. He's actually using the uh, smaller one that we have, that little scraper, on the 8430 that we hooked up the other day. 8430 may be too much horsepower for that um, pan. Maybe too big of a tractor. 
Ah, we'll go see in a little bit. Anyway, Brock, you're done. It's like quarter to six here, so we're gonna get some stuff cleaned up and he's gonna go home. I'm gonna haul a little dirt and then we're going home for the night. Oh, what time do I gotta do irrigation? Seven something? I'll look. I'll look, Farm HQ, they'll tell me. Ooh, look, there goes Haggy. He's still spraying corn. Okay, well, we made a couple of rounds. We moved a little bit of dirt. We got more to do. But we got some spray on over there. Anyway, we're gonna go back and see how Dad's coming and if he needs any help. Well, he's getting it. Or at least part of it. All right, he got it dumped out. He was coming around this corner and had a little too big of a bite and a little too much traction. And he pulled the dolly wheels off of the rest. So it kind of has like gooseneck type ball. And um, well, it, it ripped it apart on the pan side. So I guess he's gonna take that up there and um, we're gonna weld her back together. We may need a smaller tractor or a new pan, one of the two. Here's where we layered that dirt, and you can see how nice black dirt that stuff is. It's, it's good topsoil, especially compared to the rest of the crap around my house here. So we just we just need a coating of it everywhere. Straight into the shop. Yeah, about that. Well, the. The, the nut came off the bowl. That's that's the problem. We'll see. Or it was threaded into there and stripped out. I don't know. Yeah, that's a problem. She uh, she got ripped apart. So we're gonna fix it. All right, I just dropped dropped that off at the tractor. There, he's gonna take that back up. And probably not gonna work on it too much tonight. All right, um, I'm heading home. For a little bit. I've got about 45 minutes before I gotta go up and move the traveler, so I'll see you guys up there. Look at that. I get up here, there's like two feet to go. Thanks, Farm HQ, telling me when it's gonna be done. That that system is awesome. It's working great. Uh, one suggestion for you guys though, if you're watching this, make an option where I can make it send me an alert 15 minutes before it's done. That way I don't have to keep checking it, and I just know. Or it'll tell me when it's done. But I'll have time to get up here, you know? That makes sense. Okay, there's a slight wind blowing the water back at me. So I got absolutely soaked. But we've got it all picked up, ready to move to the next one, which is the last lane. So we have to go all the way out, turn around, come back. So we're facing the opposite direction. Oh yeah, seat's all wet too. And then... We get to make another short pull tonight and come back at midnight and do this again. Yay me! It's on my face. Corn pollen. Me standing on the 4020 looking straight out. That corn is tall. Very tall. That's the phone up above my head. I'm guessing we're pushing 12 feet. Very tall. Okay, we've got everything set up there. The traveler gun pulled out. I got it started reeling itself back in. We gotta go start to pump up real fast though. We are on the last lane, the very, very end of the run here. Uh, we've got these two poles left. We have not watered this end of the field since July 3rd. It's been almost a month. Today is August 1st. So uh, all of this is from two inches of water in June, basically. The last of June, first of July. That's the only thing we've done different here than anywhere else. But it makes all the difference to just get that little bit at just the right time. And that's why that's why we, we thought the irrigation stuff would work. And it does. So we're going to hit it again here now and hope we get some rain. We didn't get it today. There's another good chance on Wednesday, so a couple days from now. But we're going to keep pumping water between now and then. And um, keep feeding this corn. Keep making it grow. So... Anyway, we are doing a short run. That was what I was going to tell you. It's a short run. I got to come back at 11. Yay. Then we get a full pull overnight, so that's good. I don't have my watch on. It's like 11 o'clock. I'm a little bit early. 
We got 30 feet left on the gun, uh, the hose out there. All the lights on, fired up. We're gonna get this thing flipped around, pulled out, make an overnight run tonight. You've seen it, you don't need to watch this, so I'm gonna just go ahead and wrap this one up. Um, I gotta get ahead of this because I edited most of this video already when I was home for a while. I'm sorry, Brock, I was too mean to you today. I know you guys are gonna yell at me, but I don't know why it comes across that way in the videos. It's not really like that in real life. I wasn't mean to Brock today. I Was I, Brock? You can let everybody know in the comments how mean I was, Brock, thanks. Anyway, have a great night, everybody. Hit that like and subscribe button. Questions and comments, leave them down below, and we will see you again tomorrow. We're gonna to be in a sprayer tomorrow, I'm pretty sure of it, so. Check back for that, see ya.